I'm Dr. Fredo Gola. I'm a professor of strategy and decision making. I'm also a director at Celebrezza Business Strategies. There is a misnomer that organizations which are great in processes cannot be able to innovate. In fact, this has been furthered by those people who have said that organizations which are big have very strong structures and therefore they cannot be able to be able to innovate and become progressive. But I don't believe that is the case because there are some organizations, for example, Nokia, Kodak, which have been used to further the, the, the argument that the bigger the organization, the, the more difficult it is to innovate because they have organizational processes. But in the same length, we have seen organizations like uh, Microsoft, Google, and Apple that have innovated, not in spite of their sizeness of being big, but due to being big. That means that actually you can run an organization as a startup, a constant startup. What we mean by this is that actually you can go into reviewing the value proposition. And how do you do that? There is a structure we use in strategy at Trailblazer Business Strategy which says context, concept, execution. You analyze what is in the context of your organization to see what are the, uh, what we call uns un unserved needs. What are the missing needs? What are the gaps in that organization here in the context to know what are the unmet needs? Once you give the unmet needs, you look at which concept of organization do you need to be so that you can respond to that need. You don't have to be big, you don't have to be small. Any organization must continuously address that need. By telling us that, it means that processes actually can help organization to be ready to achieve the value proposition which they have done after reviewing it, which means process can also be reviewed to be aligned to the existing value proposition because it is through the processes that actually our customers really get the realization of a value proposition. Now, this brings an important distinction, actually two very important distinctions. And the first one is that process is to ensure efficiency in delivery of services. It is also to ensure that the value proposition is delivered in the end. But business executives must also be careful uh, not to turn processes that work and deliver results for existing business model into disability. Because sometimes if you, you, you make processes become a disability to deliver value proposition to your client, you are missing the point. So that we also need to ensure that as a CEO, processes should minimize variance in results. Processes should actually minimize costs and also ensure tangible results that organizations are looking for as outcomes. Among all the stakeholders, whether they are clients, whether they are employees, whether they are shareholders, it ensures that. Uh, and actually in this manner, you should not allow for experimentation, but you can only review them on a need basis even you can turn around. However, for innovation to take place, processes should prioritize experimentation. Meaning that learning, piloting, and then accordingly executing. So how does an organization ensure it both exploits the core model while exploring the future, which is where change is needed and innovation is required? So that's the most important point here. An organization cannot overcome this by coming up with the processes that can ensure that you can run an organization perpetually as a startup. So run your organization perpetually as a startup. This was the style that Steve Jobs used at Apple. He used it when he was at Walt Disney with immense results. So what do you do that? How do you actualize this? You conceptualize your context to see what is needed. You prototype a solution. Then you pilot your idea. Then you scale it as a magic business.
That is how you do it. For a CEO to succeed in doing this, you need to love, at the same time hate, your senior management. Why am I saying that? Love them for ensuring that they keep processes to ensure that processes deliver results without variances, without giving you uh, unclear outcomes. But hate them if they kill innovation. In fact, most innovation, most innovative ideas have died at senior management, especially in finance and risk management. They see a risk. Why? Most of your senior management are not hired to innovate, but they are hired to keep the thing work like a process, like a clock. So whenever junior staff bring them ideas from, uh, from, the, from the market, they tend to shoot it down because they are going to disrupt them. They don't want disruption. They always want to keep the status quo. So most of your senior managers are what I call caretaker managers. So be careful that you must have conversations with the lower end of the staff to see, are they suggesting any innovation to the staff uh, at senior management? Are these innovations being adopted or not? Because if you don't do that, then you cannot allow organization to innovate. The book on strategic thinking, 10 lessons from a thousand strategic plans, this is the main highlight on the supremacy of processes because in spite of the fact that I said processes are supreme, I didn't mean that processes should drive you towards rigidity. So process, once they develop, they can be so powerful as to have a mind of their own. In fact, uh, an organization can be, can be so good, irrespective of who is there, that even if the leader changes, you may still find the organization can, can function and perform so well even if the leader is not so well. What do I mean? With a great process, a great leader will be greatest. With great processes, middle level, not so great a leader can actually perform greatly. So this is what I say is a lesson that Equity Bank CEO James Mwangi needs to learn from. Because James Mwangi has become Equity Bank and Equity Bank has become James Mwangi. The same thing was said about Steve Jobs. That Steve Jobs is Apple and Apple is Steve Jobs. The organization capabilities do not reside on individuals. They do reside on processes. So that is the supremacy of processes. And I could urge that any leader who knows that he has good ways to run an organization, put these things into processes, put them into organizational values, and you'll be able to get the benefits of forming an organization that is so stable, that can thrive across the time when innovation is needed and also when stability is required.